Two Moments in Special Needs Education. My name is Andrew Thomas at Estfold University College um, and I'm your teacher in One School for All, the module um, that takes part of the Nordic Citizenship Education course in autumn um, 2023. And what I want you to do is to see this video before we meet on Tuesday the 22nd of August. It's a bit ambitious because it's our first lesson, but this will be the model of how we do things afterwards. And what I'm doing with this video is to describe two kind of milestone moments, which themselves then define three periods. So there's before the first moment, between the two moments, and then after the second moment. Um, so um, and, and they're important moments and they kind of tell us a lot about where we are today in special needs education in Norway and in a number of other places. Norway is not unique in this particular aspect, um, but we will we can discuss variations in this scheme in class. So um, the period before the first moment I'm describing is Gotham City. Um, I'm not sure how with the Batman world you are, um, but in many of the Batman films um, there is a place called Arkham Asylum, um, who, uh, which, which is a, a hospital for the criminally insane. Now notice that word, criminally insane. Um, the insight is, the idea is in Arkham Asylum that some people are insane, but they're also lawbreakers. And for us, we would like to distinguish between that, yeah? We would want to say, well, some people are, um, are struggle with mental illness, and some people break the law. But if you break the law because of your mental illness, well, you can't really be punished for that. Um, and, and, and we want to distinguish between between those two things. That said, there are a lot of um, criminally insane uh, people in in our kind of movies and our stories. Uh, Captain Hook is one of them. Um, but um, but it, it is one of these tropes that comes up again and again in popular culture. But it's kind of offensive for us. Yeah, we want to hold these two groups for each other. But this idea of not holding them, but putting them together in the same institution actually reflects an historic um, situation situation, a historic opinion that, um, that these people belong together, um, until which, which was held very widely until about the mid to late 1700s, where institutions basically um, kept a lot of these people together, like where prisons and hospitals and asylums were very often the same place, and where the punishment was that you were put together with, um, with with other people who had also broken the law or also extremely troubled individuals. Um, and, and that is why they were dark and, and, and terrible places to be and fearsome places to be that are then portrayed in the art of the time. Now, um, school had that issue as well, that, that, um, that you've, you've basically got a place for um, people who do not struggle with mental illnesses and then other places so schools are like the opposite of those institutions. Uh, you couldn't have criminals or the insane or the sick um, in schools um, until that time. And so our first moment is when we start creating these, um, these new institutions. And this happens in both school and in prison. So just as prisons start being distinguished from um, asylums, um, for hospitals, from places for, um, for not the criminal, but the ill, um, um, or, or the mentally ill. Um, so also schools start um, with, with new institutions. So for example, in 1760, we have the first deaf school. Um, and, um, and throughout the late 1700s and through the 1800s, we have um, steadily new institutions with, with <laughs> deeply uncomfortable, charming names such as schools for idiots, schools for morons. Um, and if we look past this distasteful terminology, um, we can see that these new institutions are actually working for education for everybody. These are done very often by moral individuals or self-consciously moral reasons. Um, because the alternative was that these people couldn't go to school at all. So this moment in the end of the 1700s and right through to the 1800s until the end of the 1800s is we are starting up new institutions for um, for different kinds of people. Um, 
Um, and like I say, before that, they just didn't have any school. So those were going not from um, school together with everybody else to school in a different place, but from no school at all to school in a special school, schooling. Um, and like I say, they were um, they were separate and they were people for people with emotional and cognitive difficulties. Um, so and, and this was all a morally charged affair. We're saying we want to include these people in schooling and therefore special schools. So there was some ambiguity when um, in in 1992, Norway started closing these schools. Um, and that is our second moment. Um, two years after um, the end of apartheid, three years after the fall of the Berlin Wall, in the name of inclusion, Norway says, we don't want these special schools. We want to have um, our special needs education to happen in one school, one school for all. So we've got this period um, before the, um, the special schools when there was no education for, uh, for example, the deaf or for the um, those with cognitive difficulties. And then this period between the two moments when there is education for them, but they're in different schools, they're separated, they're segregated, we might say. So that's why I say I, I think this is related to apartheid in some way or segregation societies in some way. And then in 1992, we say we're against, segregation becomes a bad word. And similarly, for morally loaded um, reasons, we have one institution. And this happens all over. Now, two years after Norway closed all these schools that in on the 7th to the 10th of June in Salamanca in Spain, um, there was a World Council on Special Needs Education on Access and Equality. 92 nations represented and, um, and lots of um, organizations, including the World Bank, for example, but also um, interest organizations representing peoples with various forms of um, people living with various forms of disability, um, different categories of human beings um and um and everybody um working together and came up with this um large agreement in the salamanca statement that this is the way forward actually educating people everybody um of different um educational needs all in the same school and these were called um, inclusive schools uh, let me just tell you a little bit of what they said um, um in the Salamanca statement, it says the practice of mainstreaming children with disabilities should be an integral part of national plans for achieving education for all. Even in those exceptional cases where children are placed in special schools, their education need not be entirely segregated. Part time attendance at regular schools should be encouraged. Necessary provisions should also be made for ensuring inclusion of youth and adults with special needs in secondary and higher education, as well as in training programs. Special attention should be given to ensuring equality of access and opportunity for girls and women with disabilities. So notice this word should, it's coming up again and again. Uh, we think of this as a moral matter. Um, and, and it's curious that um, the it is morality which is behind both of these moments, both the situation of separating children um, and separating school institutions and saying we're going to have lots of different schools, but for the same um, for the same objective, i.e. they're all for education. And then similarly, moral reasons or reasons of inclusivism behind having one school for all. So they are two different moments. We distinguish between both of them, um, but they um, but they have the same motivation and the same objective, uh, and they look completely different. Separating or including um, many schools or one school, um, go in completely different directions. But in many ways, we live with the consequences of both of them. On the one hand, we both live with this situation of one school for everyone, this ideal of inclusivism. But in also in, um, in another way, we live with this. Um, this move towards distinction and saying that we need to know who is who in our classroom. We need to know um, a great deal about our pupils. We need to understand who they are and what are their educational needs as an individual. Um, it's just that previously we would have uh, meant, said that that means schools in different places, whereas now we're saying these are all meant to take place in the same place, the same, um, the same institution. So that is the challenge of understanding one school for all um, yeah, that we will be tackling, tackling this semester. And that is the challenge that we'll be discussing when we meet on Tuesday. I very much look forward to getting going with that.